down a narrow lane off Heath Street, you will find Berg House, a building from the Queen Anne era steeped in 300 years of history. My name's Mark. I'm the director of Berg House and Hampstead Museum. Berg House was saved from the council in 1979, and we're here to keep this beautiful Queen Anne building open to the public for free. We're a museum on the local area. Uh, we have an art gallery and a, a cultural hub for anything that happens around here, from concerts to talks to workshops with children. It all happens in this building. We're in the Christopher Wade room, named after one of the great gents who saved the house. Christopher Wade was a local historian and wrote many, many books on the local area and the history of it. It has changing temporary exhibitions. The one that you're currently seeing at the moment is a retrospective of a wonderful Hampstead-based artist called Ishmael McWerter. And it allows us to work with people in the community to celebrate the culture around here. So sometimes it will have retrospectives like this one. Sometimes we'll focus on specific parts of history and our own collection to, to show there. I noticed a room downstairs that appeared as almost like a small concert hall. Uh, well, we have a music room. It's a, it's a beautiful panelled room. But the room was always called a music room, even back to the Victorian period in a different shape and form. It had an organ in for the Grills family so they could have their family concerts there. Since the 1970s, it's been a place where musicians can hire to put on lovely recitals. What's the story behind the Hampstead Museum? Well, the Hampstead Museum was officially accredited in 1991. We were already collecting objects related to the local area. We now have nearly 4,000 objects in our collection. And they range from a great painting collection to fantastic photographs of London and Hampstead to more peculiar objects. There's definitely a set of skis in there somewhere. There, <laughs> there's the famous High Hill Penguin from the bookshop on the high street, which is one of the last remaining penguin display models, to shop signs, odd bricks, even a bag of rusty nails. They've all got a story behind them. They're all incredibly important uh, in terms of remembering the people that lived here, um, the art and the creativity that Hampstead inspired over the years. Berg House was originally built in 1704. It was built on land reclaimed from Hampstead Heath. This was the only building between here and Camden. It was built uh, for a couple called the Sewells, and they were merchants in, in fabric. Um, but more importantly, they were Protestant dissenters, and the reason they chose here was outside of the City of London's boundary, which meant they could practice their religion. At the very end of its life, before the Second World War, its last residence uh, was the daughter of uh, Rudyard Kipling. They lived here until his death. We know he came here an awful lot. And what you see in the house at the moment is a little bit sympathetic to the 20th century, to those early years of the 20th century, when this really was quite a swanky home in Hampstead. But then the war happened and this house was left empty. It survived, not a drop of bomb damage to it, although the area around it was pretty much lost. Come the 1970s, the house was full of rot, it had holes in the roof, and we're left with this great unlisted building that no one knew what to do with. And some great residents of Hampstead got together and decided, no, we're going to save it, save it for the community. And back in those days, there was Judy Dench and Michael Palin, Melvin Bragg. They all shook their buckets in the high street, and 35 years later, here we are. Mm -hmm.